Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know if Dominique, do you actually live in the Ukraine as well? I do. Oh, well, there you go. All the way from Ukraine, guys. And also a special thanks for the specific... Uh, uh, Arrangements. <laughs> <Both my legs. laughs> it's, uh, it must be tricky, so thank you very much for being here anyway. Um, and also, Caro van Cultura, thank you for uh, organizing them to be here. Um, just a short introduction of the Innovation Cafe. We're a weekly informal meetup where we try to connect the tech, design, and knowledge community of Eindhoven. Uh, we do this by always uh, um, creating uh, some extra uh, content uh, by providing talks or workshops or discussions or whatever. Uh, today, this is t uh, organized by Unit City, uh, all the way from Yukon, like I said. And uh, they're going to talk a little bit about their um, yeah, innovative uh, new ecosystem kind of I can tell right like that's how I could say it um, so uh, like I said we're here every week from uh, 5 30 uh, the program you can find on our website which is over there um, also on social media you can follow us there uh, and we're also live streaming today so if you want to look it back please feel free to do so um, and um, yeah I hereby want to give the word to Dominique and the rest Katerina and Constantine uh, to talk a little bit about their uh, concept so please take it away. Cool. Thank you. Uh, well, maybe, well, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I'm going to start by introducing ourselves. I'm Dominique Piotet. I'm the CEO of Unit City. You will discover what is Unit City in a second. Um, and I'm French and American. I grew up in Paris, but I am uh, an entrepreneur. I started my company in San Francisco. I lived uh, 18 years in Silicon Valley. And that guy over here, Constantine came all the way from Kiev to San Francisco to grab me and to tell me, no, no, you have to move to Ukraine because it's much cooler. And I didn't believe him. And then I went and uh, then I took my family and we all moved to Kiev uh, for what I consider the coolest project in my, in my career by far. So we'll watch here. So uh, on my left, um, Katerina, she's our CMO. Maybe a few, something about you? Uh, well, I joined uh, the company, the, the project, the movement, not so, not so long ago. Um, I have uh, lots of years in marketing, and uh, uh, I think that uh, Unit City is pretty much the best thing that has happened to me professionally. Uh, it's uh, an amazing, um, unprecedented project for uh, Ukraine, and maybe even for, in some ways, entire world. Uh, you'll hear what we do and what we do and what we actually envision is even more than what we do already. And uh, it's an honor that I can be uh, communicating this, uh, uh, this, uh, this amazing thing, this kind of miracle that is happening in, uh, in Ukraine and pretty much the center of Europe, in the center of Kyiv, in the center of, uh, of uh, the city. So that's about me. Uh, my name is Konstantin, and uh, I'm really, really happy to be here today with you, and I'm really thankful for having us and for your time uh, to, uh, uh, to listen to somebody who came from, from Ukraine and uh, uh, with some project uh, with the nice uh, name of, uh, of Unit City. Uh, I'm a managing partner in, the, in Unit City, and I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm that guy who makes... Uh, all people around believe that it's, Unit City is the best project of their life, and uh, and it's. I, I I hope that it's uh, very true. And uh, today we will uh, share more information about what is that, why we are here, what is our mission, what we are doing, why we are doing that, why we have a chance to succeed, why people uh, are so impressed once they are first time in Unit City, and uh, how we can all do. Uh, business together, collaborate, to transfer the knowledge, to transfer the ideas, uh, to visit each other and be friends. So that's, that's the point. Yeah, so we are all here in a, in a learning trip uh, because we wanted to discover uh, what's going on in one of the cities that is considered uh, the most innovative in the world. Um, I have to say that we had two, already two amazing days. Uh, we went to many, many places. It's super, super inspiring. Um, you know, we come 20 years after you. And, and, and so 
Okay, 15. Well, okay, we can debate. Uh, and we don't have a Philips to build something on. So, but we have a few things. We have a strong tech culture. Um, we have a few revolutions. And actually, I think we, we kind of like, you know, uh, that rebellious spirit. Um, and, um, and we have some, some, some amazing talent. I'm going to start with showing you a video. That video is super cheesy. Um, I'm a lot in it, um, but I do like it because I think it kind of show you uh, our vision and, and what we're trying to achieve. So, the video. Itayu, my name is Dominique. I'm French and American. I just moved from San Francisco to Kiev. I'm the new CEO of Unit City, and I'm here to support the opening to the world of Unit City and make it more international. We are building here as going to be one of the largest innovation parks in Europe and probably even in the world. We are here in Ukraine where we have all those talents who are willing today in uh, 2020 uh, to create the great companies of tomorrow, the unicorns of tomorrow. My mission is also to create an ecosystem and to support an ecosystem where we can create great companies, uh, the, the next unicorns. My dream is to have those unicorns not coming from Silicon Valley, not coming from France, not coming from the UK, not coming from Israel or China, but the next big unicorns, I want them to come from here, from Unit City. That is what we are trying to do, this is my mission. In 2025, Unit City is the place uh, on the top five on all the innovation cluster in the world. In 2025, Unit City is a unique place where people not only work, but where also they live. Um, we have Unit Home, and, and they can live here, they can work here. It's a place where life is easier, uh, life is also more sustainable. Unit City is all about education. Actually, we started Unit City with education because we believe talent is at the very center of anything we do in terms of innovation. Um, so we started with Unit Factory. But developing or educating the best coder in the world is not enough. You don't need just soft hard skills, you need the soft skills. We need to have not only developers, but we need to build managers. We need to create people who are going to be willing to create company. Uh, this is why, for example, we created the Unit School of Business to train and form the entrepreneur of tomorrow. Somebody told me, you should check out what's going on in Ukraine. And there is something amazing called Unit City. I flew in, I found this place, and I fall in love. Thank you guys. Yeah. You need CD, please. Thank you. Uh My friends are going to jump on the conversation uh, and, and, of course, uh, question and, and, and uh, are more than welcome. Um, I'm going to start by talking to you a little bit about the, the Ukrainian ecosystem uh, because I, I don't think we can really understand why we're building Unit City if you don't, we don't understand the ground uh, on which we are uh, trying to build it. Um, so I'm going to skip this one. I'm going to go to this one that is uh, nicer. Uh, well, it was. Um, so the, the, the tech industry is really booming in Ukraine. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very clear. It's a 26% growth, um, from 2017 to 2018. Um, and, and, and we see the same number, um, over and over again. Um, actually, we now have in 2019 more than 200,000 developers. Um, and we anticipate that by uh, 2022, we're going to have 300,000 developers, uh, thanks to, well, actually, school that we have, Unit Factory, uh, but thanks also to the, to, to the university in Ukraine. Um, and um, and uh, tech provide 4.5 billion uh, in terms of revenue, in terms of export. Uh, it's the third sector uh, in Ukraine. However, 
um, and that's and I'm going to be transparent with you. Um, I don't really like those 5.5 billion because I feel like we are exporting our knowledge. Uh, it's uh, a lot about uh, outsourcing, um, which is a big business in the IT sector in Ukraine. Um, and I don't feel like we have yet the culture of creating products, creating company. Um, we have we are still more in a culture of of, of outsourcing, which is which is one of the things that Unit City is trying to solve by providing that platform where entrepreneurs can really create companies, find talents, find funding, find accelerators and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and events. I will come back to that. Um, and, and basically nothing was invested in startup. Uh, 337 million. Uh, I don't know if you know how much money was invested in, in Silicon Valley uh, uh, last year. Do you, do you have any idea? $50 billion, uh, which is a third of the entire VC money in the world. Uh, and, and the entire VC money in the U.S. is $100 billion, and the rest is basically the rest of the world. Um, so so we, don't, we, don't, we don't have yet a, a, good, uh, a good funding uh, ecosystem to support the growth of our startup. Uh, I'm going to pass this one. So this is, this is really the, 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 the growth of... Uh, of uh, of the IT industry, as you can see, it's uh, it's almost five percent of the of the GDP. It's going to be six point five percent next year. And this is uh, the VC investment. So we started from nothing in 2014. I mean, 2014, we had a little revolution, and it was it was it was interesting. Uh, we are at 337, um, and as as you can see, it's um, it's mostly uh, mostly early stage. Uh, which means that basically we have some money to, to start, but, but as soon as you want even seed money or, uh, A or B or C, that's, it's, it's extremely complicated. However, we have success stories. Um, and we have a few really nice success stories. Uh, the first, uh, Ukrainian, um, uh, unicorn is called Grammarly. And I don't know if you knew that Grammarly was Ukrainian, but nobody knows that Grammarly is, is Ukrainian, so probably we have a little question about storytelling uh, and marketing our country. Or, but, but however, it's a Ukrainian company. Um, but you can see that we have also some nice exit. Uh, Ring, Amazon purchased uh, Ring um, a few years ago. Um, Luxury was, uh, was bought by, uh, by Snapchat. Uh, Rakuten bought Slides. Google made a few uh, acquisitions. So it's, it's starting. It's starting. Oh, and we have the National Startup Fund. Do you want to talk about the National Startup Fund? Because we just have the president, the prime minister, and everybody giving those first round. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Uh, but, but maybe before going to National Startup Fund, I will I'll tell you a few words about why it happened in Ukraine, why we have this boom uh, of... Uh, of IT developers and IT and digital sector in Ukraine. Um, probably, I'm not sure how it's about in, in, in Netherlands, but uh, what we see from Ukraine that the average salary in Europe is approximately from 2 to, to 2.5 thousand euro per month. Uh, that's what we believe. Um, and um, in, in Ukraine, it's impossible to have it uh, because when you graduate from, from university, the first job that you have, if you're you know, graduated law department, maybe 400 euro. Uh, in um, retail, maybe 400, maybe 500 euro. In medicine, it's about the same money. Uh, but if you are uh, graduated in IT, then immediately you have 1,500. And it's just the, the beginning. And then in a year time, you can have 2,000. And in the five years, you can have 2,500, which is like five or six times more efficient than, you know, than all the, other, uh, all the other professions. And that's actually the chance for our young people to have uh, great salaries and to stay in Ukraine because cost of living in Ukraine is it's very different than, than here in Europe. And uh, they can feel very, very comfortable uh, staying in Ukraine, having those kind of, uh, of payrolls. Um, that's, that's why. So that's what creates the demand 
uh, of the education in, in IT. That's why so many youngsters are, are there. They understand that they can be so efficient. They can get whatever they, they want in, in, in terms of money. Uh, and in, in one day, uh, why it happened? Because the IT sector was never regulated in Ukraine. And that's cool because it was by their own and, um, uh, and, and people were free of, of coding. The taxation was very liberal. It's still liberal. And um, uh, people understood that, okay, so this sector is something that we need to go there and, and to stay. In, in certain point in 2017, uh, state understood that they have to support startups in, in, in some way. You know, our, our team, we are traveling a lot uh, around the world. We've been to Silicon Valley like seven times in Israel, in, 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 uh, in Estonia, in China, in South Korea. I mean, everywhere. We are, we are learning and we see uh, what attention uh, is paid for uh, the startup community in, 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 in Israel or in Estonia or even in here. You know, so though that's, that's some, the state understand that startups is something that lets economy grow in the end of the day, that creates innovations. Uh, in 2017, um, there was an idea to create the National Startup Fund, and in 2018, it was created uh, with, the, um, uh, with a total yearly budget of uh, 300 million hryvnias, which is $15 million per year, but understanding that we don't have much startups yet. Uh, because people uh, who are involved in the uh, IT, they're more um, working as the outsourcers for the companies in, in you know, in, in, in Valley, in, in Israel, or in Europe. Um, so the states start to create that movement of startups to support them and to give them the uh, grants. And um, actually, I think that it was a very smart move, and uh, the administration of the fund is, uh, I mean, they are learning, but it's, it, it's, really, it's really good. And um, last Friday, we had the uh, first uh, winners of, of those, those teams who got the grant from the state, and the president of Ukraine and the prime minister of Ukraine, they've been uh, to Unit City to give away those grants to the team. And for us, it was so, so important because, um, uh, you know, we are working with, with a lot of international companies and embassies because uh, for embassies, it's also important to show their, um, their companies, their business, that in Ukraine, we have something great and we are always have a lot of visitors of different embassies. And in that day on Friday, we had the visitor from, um, uh, from Ch Japan. You know, in Japan, cult culture is it's cool because uh, the hierarchy is very, you know, is, is, is very respectful. So if you, like, you, you're in the high position, you know, I mean, you know that J Japanese culture is great. And uh, two people came from, from Japan, and the first thing that they see is, like, President of Ukraine is walking. And then Prime Minister is walking. And said, wow, I mean, it's always like that? And we said, well, I mean, you know, it's, yeah, it happens. So. Uh, and then we start to communicate that, yeah, the members of Parliament of Japan, we've been here also, so we had a tour with them. So members of Japan, for them, it's also the you know, something. And Ambassador was here, and here's the picture of the Ambassador standing on the place like where you are standing right now. And for them, it was the, just imagine they were flying for half of the world, to open up the R&D center, and they have the support of the first uh, uh, first managers of the country and of the, their own country, and they were like totally shocked. Um, yeah, so startup movement is, is starting, and it's supported from 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 all the states. And um, yeah, now we have pitching date number two for the next uh, fund, which open for the next I think six six months or something. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's the short story about the stuff of phone. <laughs>
I'm sorry for taking so long. No, it's okay. It was a short story about the startup fund. Um, well, I'm going to pass this one, and I'm going to move to Unit City. So I think you understood, right? Uh, we, we, we have an ecosystem that has strong components with talents. Uh, we're lacking money. Uh, we're lacking, we're lacking a, a, a startup culture, um, and, we, and we need to build this. And, and, and also what is important, and it's really part of our vision, we, we want to do it for Ukraine. Um, actually, this morning I saw a very interesting figure, which is um, uh, when, when, when people, when, when Philips shut down, people in Eindhoven, they don't leave. They stay. Uh, in, 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 when Detroit uh, starts to have problem in the U.S., people leave. Well, in Ukraine, people leave. Uh, people leave to find a better job, especially if they are um, uh, developers. We want to stop that. Um, and, and, and really, our vision is to, is to create an ecosystem where, where talented people can, can learn and can stay and can find funding and can find support to uh, really create their future uh, within Ukraine. So uh, basically, we started with that. Um, so Unit City is an old BMW factory. I call it BMW, but it's not BMW. Um, it was uh, a BMW factory that our Russian friend uh, took from Germany when they left after World War II, and they decided to install it in Kiev, um, where where that beautiful factory was uh, producing an excellent motorcycle for the entire empire. Uh, what's the name of it? Uh, Ual? No? Kiev Motorcycle Factory. Um, we took over that factory and we decided actually to keep that, um, that uh, beautiful chimney that is actually really high, that is for us a symbol of uh, the old world linking to the, to the new world. Uh, there's a light in the in the chimney. Actually, we just won a, a big award design for it that is almost visible from the moon. We don't know. I haven't been, so I'm still still waiting. But but we call that those are our moonshot, you know. So it's, this is a symbol of okay. We this is what we're aiming for, and and this is basically what the Unit Factory was looking looking like um, four years ago. Um, and this is 2015. This is 2016. What you see here, Unit Factory, is our coding school. Um, and we're really proud of this. It's very important for us. We decided to start with a coding school. We have 1,000 students in this coding school. They're staying with us for um, almost three years. The program is inspired by School 42 in France, but we decided to adapt to our own uh, principle for many reasons, including the one that I'm French and I love French people. Um, and, and it's peer-to-peer -peer learning, and it's uh, problem-solving uh, learning. Really interesting. So those students, they have to stay three years with us, and, and they, they have to progress solving bigger problems, but they cannot solve those problems alone. They have to find peers to create teams, to um, etc. It's, it's extremely successful. We, the acceptance rate uh, is around 4% um, for each of our batch, so it's very competitive to get in. And we pay for all of it. Uh, it's almost free. It's not completely free, but it's almost free. Um, the only thing is we ask the student to stay three years in Ukraine. They don't have to work for us. They don't have to work with us. But we ask them to stay three years in Ukraine. It's, it's key. Education is really at the center of, uh, of anything we do. And this is Unit City today, three years after. So we've made a lot of progress. It's, uh, it's, it's only 7% of what we're going to build. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, it was this summer. Yeah. Yes. Today you will see actually uh, uh, another building uh, built in the back. Um, and uh, it's only built at 7%. We are on um, uh, 25 hectare uh, territory. Um, and really we're building a city. The idea is, uh, and, uh, and actually, Kostya, can you explain this one? Because this is your favorite. Yeah. The five pillars. Uh, uh, so, uh, I like it because uh, you know, we have five pillars so in, in Union City. Pillars, pillar number one is education. And education is super important because, uh, again, we were traveling a lot and we see that the most wanted resource everywhere is talent. And luckily in Ukraine we have, we have those smart people uh, uh, which 
love to work in IT. So we are grabbed the best people uh, with acceptance rates of, of 4% and we educate them. We create the talented developers. Um, in educational cluster, we have Unit Factory, it's a coding school. We also have the Accelerator. Um, uh, it, Accelerator is also have an interesting business model because they're working with the startups and with the corporates. In this, uh, in, in the current year, they are working with Ocean, they're working with L'Oreal. Uh, it's a global companies, and um, uh, that's why they are able to attract startups not only from Ukraine but also from area, from Poland, from Belarus, from other countries. Um, so in IT we have school, in we have accelerator. The same we have in um, in business education. You know that in Ukraine is a post USSR country, and we didn't have much. Uh, of uh, business in USSR uh, and no knowledge about entrepreneurship. And uh, we decided to create our business school. It's called Unit School of Business, USB. Uh, the idea of the school is that we bring uh, uh, together um, people who already have their own small or medium business. Uh, it's not like a regular business school. When you go there for two years and you have a lot of theory and and then you're just thinking how to implement it and if you need it or not. In here, it's like short program for four months uh, for those who are already in business, but they have some challenges. For example, I have the small bakery and I would like to, to scale up. And always with scaling, there are a lot of issues happening. And I understand that they're a challenge for me. And so I go to the school and say that, look, this is my business model. This is how I was working before and that's my target. So could you please teach me what should I do to avoid the mistakes and to be successful in my scaling? So they take your personal uh, case and they develop that case. So they bring the knowledge uh, for you how to do it correctly. Of course, as a side, they have a lot of nice program like, like Scrum, like Agile, like Lean, all those things that you know, without them, you know, you cannot be successful in the world. And so we have the school, and on top of that, we also have uh, industrial accelerator for for entrepreneurships, for entrepreneur, for entrepreneurs. That's that's it, because once you understand how you scale up, then probably you need to have finance, and then you can pitch to the industrial accelerator. Said, look, this is my model. This me, this is what I would like to do and that's the amount that I would like to attract and if they're successful so uh, industrial uh, accelerator will invest and will buy not more than 10 15 percent just to support them with the knowledge that we already have in in legal in in mentoring in 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 finance just to make sure that they are moving in the right directions in that case we're just developing their their businesses together so pillar number one, it's education, it's clear. I will be shorter with the, with the other pillars. Uh, pillar number two, <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can talk about Union City forever, so yeah. Pillar number two is, um, is community itself. It's what we see here. Um, we uh, have great event halls, uh, three of them in Union City, and every day something happening. Um, Last year we had 420 events, uh, starting with hackathons, ending with uh, corporate presentations, summits. Uh, um, we attract beautiful speakers around the world just to, 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 to have the audience like that so we can share or they can share some opinions. We can find some ways how to collaborate. But the most important is that we are uniting all the innovation people, all the digital people, within Kiev and within Ukraine. Because the, uh, we believe that Unicity is the gateway of the digital sector, the digital world of the digital um, yeah, sector of, of Ukraine. So uh, community and events, that's the pillar number two, super important. Everybody knows that something cool is happening to Unit City, in Unit City this day, almost every day. Pillar number three is uh, labs and R&Ds. Uh, currently, we have two labs. One is the uh, uh, prototyping lab, 
uh, we're doing together with uh, uh, with Fab, Fab Lab Fabricator, the guys from MIT. So they have like thousands of labs around the world, great people and you know fantastic teams. Uh, uh, that's a prototyping a lab is more used for 3D printing, 3D materials, modeling, uh, printing out of the composite of the resins of uh, titanium, very precise printings. Um, they also have the ceramic, uh, ceramic cluster, um, the wood uh, cluster, so you can manufacture something with, with the woods, uh, the electromechanical zone, and so, I mean, it's so cool. The idea is to uh, connect those startups which, doing, which are working with the products uh, with, the, with the ability to make the prototype of those products. Uh, that's number, number one, but number two for me is, is even more closer because we are doing a great workshop for kids. You know, on the weekend, uh, a lot of uh, like pupils from the high school, they're just doing their own projects. They, they, we, we learn them how to make the models uh, what is the difference of the of the materials? How to work with all those materials? And it really motivates them for, for you know, for future growth and for future education in, in tech. So pillar number three is lab plus R and D. Uh, the another lab that we have is a laser lab, but okay, I will another lab. But in the in in the end, we would like to have at least eight different labs for people to to work in, including the the medical cluster. Uh, pillar number four is the infrastructure. We call it infrastructure. M people sometimes they mixing it up with the business campuses, but for us it's not about the square meters. It's about the infrastructure that keeps all the startups, all the community, all the uh, uh, all the people in one place. And this infrastructure is fantastic. Um, because we uh, are working hard on the on the architect. Usually, we do the uh, construction after the open architect contest. So, we attract architects from the market to uh, you know to to deliver their own vision of the next building that we built with all the storytelling. With the you know, so it, it's cool to be a platform for for creative class and to be able to implement whatever they think it's cool and. I mean, that's, and actually the chimney that Dominic has uh, told you about, it was also, we didn't know what to do with that, whether we should de demolish it or just to keep it. And then we did the uh, uh, open contest and 19 countries were participants, 90 architects from 19 countries, countries were participants of that contest. And the guy from, uh, from England won. And this year they won uh, the lead award, the, the biggest uh, light uh, urban light um, contest and our chimney with this light spotting into this, we hope, space. They, they want it, so it's, it's really cool. And that's a result of this open platform that everybody can be a part of. Uh, so we're doing the same with the buildings and the buildings that now in the under construction, that's super cool. It's just, it, it, it will be the something to see. So we invite you in two years in Union City to, 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 to have a chance to see how, it, how cool it is. Um, all the buildings are certified according to LEED standards. That means that we are caring about manage, uh, we, we are care about the electricity, uh, heat, water, gray water management, so, and so on. And the pillar number Five, it's the residential part. We believe that it's so cool not to commute. I know it's not a big problem for, for Eindhoven because you know, it's relatively very small, but in Kiev, it takes like an hour for commuting, sometimes even more. Uh, so we decided to uh, be able uh, for those who are working in, the, uh, in Unicity City, for them, their families to stay just next to them and to have all the infrastructure for kids like kindergarten, school, um, fitness, medical uh, hospital, the, the med medical cluster, the hotel, um, the park for almost three hectares. So it's, it's really, really nice and safe, safe place to stay because what is combining ev all of those five pillars is uh, smart and safe technologies. Um, you know, that 
everybody has their own vision what, what smart is, what smart city is. But we just took the ISO standard, which was published last, last May, and we just go strict on that with the face recognition systems, with the uh, integration of light, integration of, um, of uh, door passing and a reading of the place of the car. So, you know, the algorithms and AI will think what is better for you in the weather conditions and uh, they just track all the emergency situation within the, the, the unit city. For example, if somebody in unit city do like this, then the camera spotted it and the, uh, the signal goes directly to the control center. It means that something, that something happens, like extraordinary, or like this. If somebody spot like this, something happened. Usually we don't have the problem with the weapons, but again, you can program it in, in a different way. If somebody runs or uh, if somebody falls down or even if there is a smoke, in the room, we spot it even before the detector uh, have it on the top. So it, it, it's really cool because it's impossible to observe like 300 cameras in the same time, even, I mean, even for 100 people, it's just impossible. But our algorithms, they see that something happening and they uh, push out the notification. And of course, we can react more efficiently. Uh, <sighs> okay, Tom. Okay, all right. Okay. So five pillars. And as you can see, we care about privacy a lot. This is why we have artificial intelligence. And no, I'm kidding. Um, of course, we do. Uh, and 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 this is this is also something that is really interesting. We want to build this with the community, um, and we will have the technology, but we will also build it with the community. Um, for us, it's important. I mean, having having facial recognition that is forbidden in most countries, as, as you know, because of, uh, because of privacy uh, questions, uh, we will work very differently. We want to make that technology available, and we want to try, but we want to try with the community. Um, and this is why, for example, we're launching soon a hackathon where uh, we're going to ask the people working with us um, and living with us already to build those services. I know, I know this, this, this topic is very sensitive in Europe, uh, and, it's, and it's, of course, very sensitive for us. Um, I, I'm going to pass the, the mic to, to Katia because I really want her to talk about the, the idea of building a movement, building a community, because for us, it's very important not to build another ecosystem. Um, I, I lived most of my life in Silicon Valley. I don't want to duplicate Silicon Valley. Uh, I think there's no need. Um, I think that would be absolutely counterproductive. And actually, in fact, I think we will fail from day one uh, because it's, it's not what the world needs. Uh, Silicon Valley is a very specific place, and, and I know it really well. So, but however, we really want to try to build a community. Um, and actually, we've learned a lot about what you guys are doing here uh, on trying to build a community because I think this is the most complex uh, and difficult thing to do. Um, and, um, and, and we have several ideas or we're exploring, but maybe you can share a little bit of the things we're doing with our residents. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. Uh, Exactly, uh, echoes, like uh, doing things with the residents is uh, definitely part of the uh, marketing uh, efforts and uh, part of the uh, unit city story because one of the story is we want to be heard. We want to, be, we want to spread all over the world as unit city and be heard as the uh, technology hub. Uh, but we also want our community to be uh, empowered. And uh, we want uh, everyone who works with Unit City to feel that they are part of it. And um, uh, our main idea is that people actually uh, get together and uh, they, uh, the ideas are born out of their interaction within Unit City. That's why, uh, that's why we have, uh, 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 that's why we have, um, uh, you know, accelerators and uh, and coding school, and uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of communal community events uh, where people come together <laughs> and um, they are targeted at different uh, sometimes they are targeted as at, at problem solving uh, sometimes they are targeted at uh, uh, sharing of uh, information for example as we come back from this trip 
we met with so many fascinating people and we've got so many uh, insights on how Eindhoven does it, uh, on how Brainport has done it. And we want to uh, get our uh, partners and we want to get our residents and we want to get our teams and uh, we even want to get our subcontractors uh, who help us communicate together and we want to share this knowledge. And, uh, and we're jealous that you have Peter and we don't. Yes. Yes, we're trying to recruit Peter, but he is strong. <laughs> He's not giving in. But basically, um, uh, yes, we uh, know we are just little parts. And uh, the true movement is created when these parts come together. And uh, there should be a magnet for that. And we are trying to create those magnets by events, by empowering our startups, uh, as already been said, <coughs> by um, letting people work together. For example, we have a couple advertising agencies. We create um, uh, situations where uh, advertising agencies can actually service our uh, startups and help them to uh, create identities and to, uh, to, to define themselves for the market and for the pitching. Uh, we have ideas of, uh, we, we are actually planning a big pitching day. We have lots of pitching days in Ukraine, but we want to be like the epicenter uh, and we want to, to have that um, 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 creative mass of, of venture funds, of investors and of uh, startups that come to Unit City and we have like a couple of days full of, uh, uh, full of that powerful interaction and matchmaking and pitching and uh, we want to have those startups from neighboring countries and investors actually from all over the world. We um, uh, are very integrated into the city. For example, our next uh, cool event is going to be a uh, music fest. And you would ask what has music to do with uh, innovation per se, but uh, uh, music is uh, art as we learn, as we were confirmed today even but by what we see in Eindhoven. Art is uh, like the other is the, the other part of brain that you need uh, to, uh, you, 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 for, for now we are very strong on technical part of the brain in Unit City, but we need to introduce the art, the design, uh, and so we are working with the coolest <coughs> music uh, producers in, um, in, uh, this, in Ukraine actually, and uh, known internationally by now, and uh, we will be a big uh, part of this uh, all Ukraine, all, all Kyiv uh, music festival, and um, we will also host uh, the. Um, uh, we, we also uh, working on the project together with a, a, a third uh, NGO, with uh, like a third sector uh, a player, a powerful player, Tech Ukraine. Uh, we are working on Pitch Ukraine Day. We are gonna have uh, get creatives and tech people and startups and businesses together and think how we can lift up the image of Ukraine and how we can redefine Ukraine for the entire world. And the more Ukraine is redefined for the entire world, the better we are because we are part of Ukraine and we are all about um, keeping it all uh, centered in Ukraine and keeping the people here and creating, you know, flying, you know, creating and flying off uh, globally, but staying and staying rooted in Ukraine. Thank you. So thank you. I will, I will just finish by uh, giving you just a few numbers. Um, Unit City in 2025, um, that will be around 20,000 people. Uh, that will be on the territory almost every day. Uh, that would be several schools, um, several hundreds of uh, companies. We already have 110 uh, companies in Unit City. Um, that's, that, that will be more education. Uh, that would be a smart city. But it's not just about Kiev. It's also about uh, a network. Uh, we are building and we will open in the next few months uh, another Unit City in Kharkiv, which is a very important uh, city uh, on the eastern uh, eastern part of the of the country, where we have a very important tech community, we will open a uh, unit city in Lviv um, as well, which is on the uh, western part of Ukraine, close to the Polish uh, uh, border. We we really want to create a, a, a movement, and we 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 actually want everybody to come and play with us. Uh, we need you guys uh, and so I officially uh, invite you uh, to come and share because 
because we're starting, uh, and, and, uh, and, well, I'm pretty sure you guys are still starting because it's kind of an endless journey. Uh, but for us, it's, it's still the, the, the very beginning. What's important for us is to create a community and a new culture. Um, which is which is extremely difficult to do. Um, we were I heard a lot uh, speaking about the hippie culture of the Silicon Valley, which is not something we have in Ukraine. Uh, so we will have to invent our own um, culture, something that fit us. Uh, but that is linked to the future. That is linked to creating a better country uh, for our people. So. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing so openly with us during those three days. And uh, let's, uh, you, you should come to Ukraine and to Unit City. You're our permanent guest. And we will come back. Uh, questions? Yes, questions, remarks, comments. I have Please. one. Yes. Oh, oh, there you go. Hi, my name is Enya, and I once ran a, a renewable energy incubator out in Africa. Different, different purpose, electrification, uh, but love the space. So thank you for the presentation, really interesting. My question is more on the business model. Uh, one of our challenges was the cash flow, because you have the education, which is a cash outflow, and then you invest in the companies uh, towards the later part of life, which is where the cash inflow comes in. So just curious, how do you manage the upfront cost and also the running cost of, of a place like this? Thank you. Kostya is more the money guy. Do you want to answer or do, you, do I? Okay. No, I can. That's whatever. Okay. Uh, excellent question. We have the same problem. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's tough. So we decided, and it's really important for us to be completely privately funded. So we have no governmental money. Um, it's, it's absolutely key for us. Um, not because we don't trust the government. Actually, we just signed a, a big agreement with the Ministry of Education, uh, last Friday, uh, to, to, to have closer cooperation on, on, on what we can do together. But we want to stay independent from government funding. Um, which means that we have to raise money. Um, so our main investor is, uh, is our funder. Um, but building a park like this is, is a big project that is going to be very um, uh, cash incentive. So basically, we're raising money. Um, and we are very frugal. Uh, you know, in Silicon Valley, there's two strategies when you raise money. Uh, there's the one where you spend all your money on, on your marketing and events. I call that the smoothie startup. Uh, it's like you put everything and you do a real good smoothie. You go to all the events and then at the end of the day, you don't work on your product. And you just put 10% of, of uh, well, so that's one thing. That's not us. We're more on the other side, that is the cockroach startup. And as you know, the cockroach is the last animal that will survive uh, a nuclear war. Um, not that we are pessimistic. I think we are very optimistic people. Uh, we believe in the future, but we would rather be uh, ready for whatever will happen, because cash flow is definitely an issue. Um, more and more, we call that impact investment. Look, we started with Unit Factory. We're making zero money. It costs us millions every year. Uh, but, but we strongly believe that if we don't do it, nobody will do it. Um, and, and this is not going to be successful for the country. So it's, for us, it's impact investment. But Jesus, it's tough. Thank you. Very interesting uh, what I heard. Uh, do you make a distinction between innovation and problem solving? Do I take it? Okay, that's my stuff. Uh, that's my stuff. Um, it's really interesting because the more I think about problem solving, the more I think it's um, not enough. Um, I've been raised in Silicon Valley as an entrepreneur, and you know we used, and I think we use them way too much in Silicon Valley, less now, and, but way too much in, in, uh, in Ukraine. We, we use all those uh, business canvas. And you know, it's, uh, what is the problem you're trying to solve? What is going to be your resources? What is going to be your revenue model? Um, I think it's a very narrow way of seeing things. Um, and the more, the more I think about Silicon Valley, the more I feel that they're not solving any problems. Um, they're, they're solving interesting business questions. 
I want to go from A to B and Uber is maybe a more optimal way. Um, no matter what, if it destroys jobs or if it creates more traffic, or which is now proven. Um, but actually, and, and they create the monopoly, and, and you know the story. Um, I push, and actually it's in the value of Unit City, I push the approach of wellness, which means that we want to approach those problems in their globality, not just, I'm going to fix a small problem. No. Uh, in building Unit City, I just don't want to do, oh, we're doing innovation alone. No, we're building a city. And we want that city to be smart. And no, we don't really know what a smart city is. No, we don't really know exactly what's acceptable, not acceptable. Um, no, we don't really know uh, how impactful it will be. But if we don't approach this in, in the wellness of, of the thing, we're not going to be really innovative. So yes, I make a big distinction between innovation and problem solving. I'm sorry for the long answer. I'm very passionate about those topics. Uh, thank you for your talk. It's quite inspiring and uh, ambitious. But I was wondering what's your USP, because there are quite a lot of similar initiatives in Europe. You need USB, you need School of Business? No, USP. Ah, uh, unique selling proposition. Yeah, because... Uh, it's, yeah. Very interesting point. Um, you know... I always tell that story, and actually that's the thing I told the first day I came to Ukraine. Uh, there was a press conference, and people told me about that question. Um, and I, I always say nobody goes to Silicon Valley to rent an office space. Uh, that would be the most stupid thing you do. So people go to Silicon Valley to have access uh, to talent, to money, to ecosystem, to network, uh, to a global market, to etc. Um, this is my unique selling proposition. I want to create a community and I want people to come to, uh, to Unit City because of the community. Because they're going to have access of our 1,000 talents uh, that are going to get out of school uh, almost every year. Uh, because they will have access to our unique ecosystem of, uh, we have four accelerators, four, four incubators. And this is really my, 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 my proposition. Does it exist in other places in the world? Of course. Um, but I, I do think that there is a unique proposition in, in Ukraine, um, not because of the cost of the talent, actually, because as Kostya mentioned, uh, talents are not expensive in Ukraine, and, and you can really debate, do I, do I, do I, do I have a team in France or do I have a team in Ukraine? In terms of salary, it's, it's, it's a real question. But, and, and this is what we're fighting for, nobody knows that we have the best talent in the world. And I'm serious about this. Uh, once again, I mean, I had many Ukrainian friends in Silicon Valley, I, I know what they're worth. Um, if you talk about AR, VR, if you talk about blockchain, if you talk about artificial intelligence, uh, if you talk about uh, machine learning, um, I mean, we have mo almost the best mathematician uh, that are available today. Uh, and so, I, I think nobody knows it. I think we have a real problem in storytelling. Uh, this is why actually I'm fascinated by the way you guys uh, change Eindhoven. And uh, oh, and, and by the way, we're gonna we decided after our meeting with Peter that we're gonna make uh, Unit City an, uh, an open source brand. Uh, we we love that idea. Uh, but but do you know what I mean? It's 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 really what it is. And once again. Um, if we don't make money, but we will. Just, just to add, because it's, it's a nice question. And yes. actually, D Dominic asked me first time when we, when we, when we met. And, uh, you know, my answer to that is that uh, there are so many Ukrainians around the world. They are, they are like, hardworking, and uh, um, they're responsible, they're open, and they're, like, adequate. In Silicon Valley, almost in every company you have Ukrainians. And once you're working with the Ukrainians, they said, well, yeah, that's, that's nice people, yeah. But nobody knows how to work with Ukraine because all the Ukrainians came from Ukraine, yeah. But, I mean, no, nobody knows what, I mean, who, who is that? If I would like to, 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 to open Ukraine for myself, how do I do it? So Unit City is the gate for everybody, the, the companies, countries, people, just to understand I mean, 
where those people came from. And there are still a lot of them staying in Ukraine, just, just believe me. And we are rising them up and we are um, asking them to stay in Ukraine and to be great and successful in Ukraine. So Unicity is the gateway to all Ukrainian digital and innovation um, teams, uh, people, and resources. That, that's my answer. So I'll, that, just, I'll just add, uh, basically play on what the guys uh, have said. But uh, these days, we've, uh, yesterday and today, we had this interesting discussion that uh, uh, it's the need that creates, that pushes people towards creativity. Like when there is Eindhoven uh, flourished because there was a concrete problem and the need. And uh, you had resources, for sure, that came from Philips, but there was a need. Uh, and uh, it happens, I mean, for example, Bauhaus architecture started because there was a need. Uh, so, uh, and stuff like that. And we have in Ukraine a very, uh, we had, you know, 70 years of Soviet Union, but the, 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 probably one of the only good things that came from that, we have very strong uh, polytechnics. So, uh, polytechnic universities in, uh, in institutes in Ukraine are among the strongest uh, in, in the world and recognizably. And uh, that's why we have all this uh, very strong, very powerful, very, very, very good mathematicians and engineers. Uh, and that's why uh, Ukraine at one point, uh, first 20 years after independence, flourished as the, uh, as the uh, outsourcing haven. Because first of all, we are Europeans. We think like Europeans, almost close to that. Uh, but uh, and we are very responsible and we are very smart. Uh, but uh, as as a nation, it's uh, objective uh, res research. Research uh, says that, uh, <laughs> and very humble, as you can see. But forgive well, us you that. Guys have the, the, the one kilometer but that's the world, so, yes. Know. We are we are on par with you. So on that. Uh, but that's the, you know, that's what we've got. Uh, you had to had, uh, have higher education in Soviet Union to survive. So that's why probably we have that uh, kind of statistics. Uh, and uh, now the need is kind of reforming itself because Ukraine is not producing added value. Ukraine is good with outsourcing grain, with outsourcing oils with outsourcing uh, uh, IT, but uh, Ukraine is, uh, has a very big challenge. We are learning to work together to create added value. And uh, one of the purposes for Unit City is to be that place. We want to learn ourselves to work together to create value, and we want to teach others to work together to create value. And I think this is probably our main USP, people in Ukraine. And the challenge we are facing, because Ukrainian challenge is not like any other challenge, because every challenge is unique. And uh, to respond to that challenge, you create slightly different, you know, movements, slightly different products, and, uh, and that's fascinating. I have a question to ask about, because uh, you're focusing mo mostly on Ukrainian people. Um, how do you see that working together with, for example, in internationals? Because you can imagine, like, there might be interesting connections to make there. Um, how do you integrate that into the process? Because Antov, for example, is mostly focused, well, is partially thriving because of all the internationals that come here. So I'm wondering how you intend to do that or are already doing that. That's actually a, a very interesting question and a very interesting challenge. Last year in Unit City alone, we had 80,000 visitors uh, from 60 different countries. So, so people are curious. Now, from turning them to being curious to doing business is a little bit different. Um, we decided to start country by country. So uh, three years ago, we started the Ukraine-Israeli summit. So we go to Israel and we have that summit uh, in Unit City. This year, we are doing the U.S., actually, I should say the Silicon Valley uh, Ukraine summit, where we're going to bring, we're going to go there and we're going to bring people. Um, now, the, the biggest challenge for us is to bring investors. Um, in fact, that's, that's the main question, and, and, and we're working on it. Um, today, when you, when you want to, to, to get money in Ukraine, the interest rate is about 15%, sometimes 20%. Uh, money is too expensive for us, so we have to go get the money abroad, which is, which is really interesting because 
getting uh, getting those investors uh, who are going to believe in us is going to open the doors. Uh, we need we need that label, and actually, uh, Kosia is is working uh, endlessly uh, on that. Any last questions? Okay. Thank you, guys. Then, uh, thanks, guys. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> so, I just want to thank you in person for coming again. Um, uh, I just want to point out to you uh, uh, that we're going to go to the bar, have a drink and a snack. Uh, there will also be uh, dinner afterwards that you can join. There's an Innovation Cafe special, uh, where it's a meat, fish, or vegetarian dish, dish uh, meat or fish for 17.50, or a vegetarian for 15 euros. Um, I also would like to in, uh, invite you to join us next week. It's going to be uh, organized by one of our partners, Art and Sex Society. Um, so please join us. Bring someone with you, or share the uh, share the. Share, share our event with other people. Um, and, um, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to say. So please join us at the bar, uh, and please don't forget to bring your glasses with you. Thanks.